Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the City of Douglas uh, Mayor and Commission meeting. This will serve as our regular meeting for July the 17th, 2017. And as everything, uh, our newly elected commission has been at the forefront of everything. And just so happens, this was his uh, opportunity to invite somebody for our invocation. So Commissioner Taylor, would you introduce your guest? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this afternoon, we have uh, Minister Ladrika Style from Hightower Moore Temple going to come and give our invocation. Uh, he's the musician of Hightower Moore Temple. He's under the leadership of Bishop, of Bishop Randolph Scott at this time, Mr. Style. Good evening. Good evening. Father God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day which you have made. Your word declared that we ought to pray for those in authority. Now, God, as we gather here for this mayor and city commission of you know, Douglas, Georgia, God, I pray for every city official, God, that you remove every bit of stress, every bit of aggravation off of their shoulder, God, because tonight they have to make choices, God, concerning to your word, concerning to the people of Douglas, God. I pray that they make the right choices. I pray for unity tonight, God. Father God, if there be anything that may try to cause any kind of disturbance, Father God, remove it out of the way now. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Father God, I pray that they be fair, and I pray that they be honest. Any trick of the enemy, Father God, expose it tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next, if we would have everybody to please stand and face our national colors for the Pledge of Allegiance. on your agenda we have the minutes from our meeting of June 19th 2017 but we actually placed that on our work uh, in the work session we put that on the consent agenda so if you would please strike item number four and next on the agenda we have approval of the order of the agenda I would not entertain a motion so so move. Second. Second. it's been motion and second any further discussion all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the proclamation reading for the National Aviation Fly In Date. And man, somebody have a copy of the proclamation or is it just in my. Uh, I have a copy. You have a copy? Woo! <laughs> this is wrong. Still has wrong in this. <laughs> Yeah, 
spaces and whereas the state of Georgia is served by a diverse mixture of airports ranging in size from small general aviation airports to busy corporate general aviation reliever airports has 104 publicly owned airports with 2.6 million takeoffs and landing is serviced by many aviation related businesses located on or near airports producing 471,175 total jobs for 17.8 billion total payroll and 62.6 .6 billion total economic output thus adding significantly to the annual economic benefit of the state and whereas the airport has the airport was decommissioned in in return to the city of Douglas government in December of 1944 and since has become known as the Douglas Municipal Gene Chambers Airport and supports companies that employ over 18,000 locally and have a payroll of 34 billion and whereas Douglas Airport adjoins the historic World War II flight training base which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places was created in 1939 by Wesley Raymond Robert Richardson and J.M. Thrash at the South Georgia College Flight Training School was the first flight school in the United States to sign a contract with the United States Army Air Corps, thus creating a primary flight school for the U.S. government in May of 1941 and home to the 63rd Flight Training Detachment and estimated 7,000 Army Air Cadets from 1941 to 1944 and is today one of the most in type World War II fighting training bases in the United States. And whereas since that time, the airstrip and hangar have continued to be a part of the Douglas Municipal Airport and the barracks and the administrative buildings have had a wide variety of community uses from 1954 to 1957 they were used by the Cincinnati Reds as a spring training camp as a factory of the Federal Corset Company in the late 1950s as a as a county food service distri uh, distribution center as a mental health training uh, center, a kindergarten in an elementary school, I went there, an agricultural research lab as the local headquarters for the GBI, as home <coughs> to the Wing Over South Georgia Air Show, Fleetwood Mobile Home Show, Bikes, Blues and Barbecue Festival, Georgia Baptist Children's Home, Civil Air Patrol, DNR Administrative Offices, and as the home of the Douglas Coffee County Veterans Park and whereas numerous organizations including the Douglas Air Base Preservation and Development Committee, 63rd Preservation Society, Douglas Airport Commission and the City of Douglas Reston recognize the jewel we have in this historic landmark and desire to preserve and promote the interest and importance of aviation in our state and throughout the world. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Tony L. Polk, Mayor of Douglas, Georgia, along with the City of Douglas Commission, Air Base Preservation and Development Committee, 63rd Preservation Society, and Airport Commission, celebrate the development of aviation and hereby declare August 19, 2017, as National Aviation Day in Douglas, Georgia, and I encourage all people in our city to join me in this special observance commemorated with the, a private aircraft fly-in on Saturday, August the 19th at the Douglas Municipal Gene Chambers Airport from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. So, my pen, Let's sign this and we will take a couple pictures. And
why you're signing that, Mayor. If I may add, it was also uh, the Head Start Center because I attended there in Head Start. Mr. J.D. Murray was the person to bring Head Start to Coffee County. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because I remember. Consent agenda items. As always, our city manager, Mr. Terrell Jacobs, will read off the items that we put on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mayor, and I uh, hope I'm correct. If there are any corrections, please note them out to me so I'll make sure I state them. First item is the uh, June the 19th, 2017 minutes. The next item is the bids uh, for the uh, DC-4 aircraft. The next item is the 2017 parking lot improvements of new vehicle maintenance shop bid. Uh, the next item is the annual football so soccer equipment bid. The next item is the renewal of the Georgia Department of Correction contract. And the last item is the demolition and con condemnation of the building at 110 South Madison for the approval of the uh, demolition and uh, funding of that demolition. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in agreement with those other items we put on the consent agenda? Yes. Uh, outstanding. At this time, I entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have work session items uh, for discussion slash questions and we had a couple items that we brought forward we will turn this over to our city attorney Mr. Jerome Adams how are you doing this evening? I'm good Mayor but there's one thing I need to mention I mean it's just something I cannot resist <clears throat> while, while you were reading that resolution about the Douglas Airport a while ago there's one thing that was left off of that resolution because the Douglas Airport was known far and wide for something that was very prized to fishermen around and that's airport worms. Airport worms. <laughs> Everybody, yes, sir. That's Everybody right. loved airport worms. All the bait stores around here had signs up that said airport worms. And people would go to the airport, and what they would do is they would drive a stake Steak. down in the ground beside so the worm. Grind them up. Rub a brick across the top of the stake. That would cause the ground to vibrate, and the worms would come oh, up. Wow. Well, I'll be dog. You didn't know that? I did not know that. <laughs> we used to be people out all the time. Okay. 
I, I don't fish. I think our city attorney is advocating for the airport worm festival. <laughs> The, air, the airport work. worm festival. Oh, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's pretty good. Mr. City Attorney, help us out. All right, this will be an ordinance. This will be the first reading of the uh, city marshal ordinance. Uh, we'll have the first reading tonight, and then we'll have our second reading on July the 24th. You okay. won't take action tonight. Okay, mm -hmm. be it ordained by the Mayor Board of Committee, City of Douglas, and regular media assembled in pursuit of lawful authority thereof, the city officials, division of the city of Douglas, has amended and stands amended as false. The city marshal, the duties and responsibilities, the primary duties and responsibilities of the city marshal shall be as follows to enforce all ordinances enacted by the Mayor and Commission of the City of Douglas to enforce all laws, rules, and regulations of the state of Georgia to issue warnings, notices of ordinance violations, citations for court appearances. For violations of ordinances of state laws to investigate and collect evidence of city ordinance violations, to investigate and collect evidence of violations of state laws, to respond to complaints of alleged ordinance violations or violations of state laws, to appear testify in court, to do any follow up work that may be necessary, to coordinate enforcement efforts with building inspectors, office planning division, office of public works department, and other departments of the division of the city of Douglas as may be deemed necessary. Often read for the first time at a regular meeting of the Mayor Board Commission of the City of Douglas, Georgia on July 17, 2017, and we'll have the second reading, as I stated, on July the 24th. All right. Outstanding. Thank you. All right, the next ordinance I have, which is the first reading, would be the uh, <coughs> ordinance for the uh, Mayor's Youth Council. Be it ordained by the mayor and council members of Douglas and regular meeting assembled in pursuit of law authority thereof, the mayor's use council ordinance of Douglas is hereby amended as, fo is, is as follows. <clears throat> there is created a board to be known as the City of Douglas Mayor Use Council, which, which shall consist of seven members. The members shall be city residents who are actively enrolled in public or private high school in grades 9 through 12, ages 14 to 19. The members shall be appointed by the city commission, and each member by term, at which time the position shall be declared vacant. Of the six initial members appointed for the first board, three shall serve for a term of two years, three shall serve for a term of one year, the two high school alternates, alternates and eighth grade alternatives shall be appointed by the city commission for a one term annually. Unlike other boards, the term of the membership will expire and be appointed in September or October of each year. The commissioners will attend board meetings and along with staff coordinate activities. The youth council shall elect a chairman to conduct meetings and a vice chairman to conduct meetings in the absence of the chairman. Elections shall be held at the first regular meeting after annual appointments are made by the city commission. Regular vacancies, irregular vacancies on the youth council shall be filled as they occur and regular vacancies shall be filled by appointment in September or October of each year. The proceedings of the youth council shall be recorded by the city clerk. Records shall be preserved in accordance with the record retention schedule established by the office of the city clerk. No member of the youth council shall interfere with the orderly progress of the meeting by leaving his or her seat or engaging in any unnecessary conversation. Any, man, any member guilty of any unprofessional conduct shall be reported to the Douglas City Commission. The chairperson of the youth council or his designee shall make a report to the city commission of the activities of the Douglas Youth Council at least once each calendar year. The Douglas City Commission shall receive recommendations from the mayor's youth council. The commission shall provide <coughs> youth support, staff support to the youth council to assist in carrying out their duties. The Douglas Mayor's Youth Council shall communicate upcoming issues to the Douglas Commission so they may respond accordingly. Often read for the first time at a regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Commissioners of the City of Douglas, George on July 17th, and we'll have a second reading on July 24th. There might be a, a modification in the number of members. I think there was a change in that, am I correct? It should be nine. It should be nine. Should be nine. Yeah. So we'll add that, correct? We'll change that for the second Okay, nine. Is that what, was that all the items? Uh, we had one uh, for information purposes, if uh, Mrs. Back can come forward on that in regards to Historic Preservation Commission mm -hmm. vacancy. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I just need to announce tonight there's a vacancy on the Historic Preservation Commission. City code stipulates that any member that desires to, to uh, <coughs> most serve on this commission must be a resident of the city of Douglas and shall be a person demonstrated special interest or experience or education in history, architecture, or preservation of historic resources. These will be three-year terms. 
Um, the appointment will be made at the next meeting, which is July the 24th. Uh, anyone interested shall pick up applications here at City Hall, and this term will be retroactive back to January 1, 2017. Outstanding. Is that it from our work session items? That's all the work session items. All right. Next on the agenda is Commissioner Durham. <coughs> Commissioner Durham, if you would, please, sir. Join me down here. How many oh, times are they going to give him that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring ours up here and let him give them to us. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> see, we can fill out a whole year. Mr. Ty. Mr. Ty. Yeah. Oh, why are you walking on straight now? You got your shoulders back like you're in the yeah, heart. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Before I get started, you know, we are, as a, as a commission, uh, we get the opportunity to go to some very nice places to go get some education about how to govern a city. But we also learn a lot of things from other elected officials sitting out in the hallway talking, hey, this, what's going on in your city? Did this work or this or that? Well, you know, Commissioner Dern has been on the commission for about 18 months, for about 18 months. And he epitomizes going to class, bringing back ideas, trying to make sure that he has the knowledge to make the best decision or informed decision about what's going on. And it's always insightful to hear what he has learned. Uh, Commissioner Dern, just like all of us, I will say this right here, when we go off on the city's dime, we go and we go to class. We go to class, uh, sometimes uh, we don't like the classes, Sometimes the classes are very enlightening. Sometimes the classes just confirm what we're already doing and let us know we're headed in the right direction. Just as when we have conversations with our colleagues, they confirm or they show us a better way of doing things. So I believe this is the second award. This is 72 hours. This is 72 hours of training classes uh, that Commissioner Contewan Darn has uh, completed. So, and let me say this right here. This is, this uh, certificate is from the University of Georgia. This is not a uh, oh, uh, uncredited uh, institution like uh, the Terrell Jacobs University. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Go stab. This is very mm, nasty mm, stab. Mm. Okay? So, <laughs> Hit him hard. <laughs> so, but uh, my last comment before I read this, well, I was in a conversation in between a uh, class and, uh, well, actually, this happened down at Amelia Island, was it Sylvester? And they were, they were, they were happy to see that we had a young person on our council because their council was basically some older gentlemen. <coughs> they had the opportunity to see <laughs> that we would bring them up. Look, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. So, the, uh, mm -hmm. let me tell you this right here. Man, you know, we govern this city and we try to govern it with a, a harmonious atmosphere and we normally have a pretty good time. So, the laughter is genuine. So, here we go. Mr. Dern, the University of Georgia, Carl Vincent Institute of Government, and the Georgia Municipal Association here, hereby certify that Contewan Dern has successfully completed the requirements for a certificate of achievement through the Harold L. Holtz Municipal Training Institute June 25th, 2017. This is signed by the president of the Georgia Municipal Association and the president of the University of Georgia. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. 
so much. <laughs> oh, you made me do it. So. <laughs> I heard him threaten you. <laughs> you heard it? Yeah. Val's dead. You must have a steering aid, though. <laughs> there we go with that old stuff again. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gowan died and I've been punching today. Outstanding. Next, we have our staff comments, and let's start our staff comments off with Commissioner Pearson. How you doing this evening, Commissioner Pearson? Oh, staff comments. Yeah. I said staff comments. You ain't staff. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. Hey. Is it a game tonight? See what I'm saying? What did I tell you, Stanley? I'm not perfect. <laughs> Do there you go. I'm trying to keep so, it short. Okay. <laughs> just a few announcements. I want to uh, just say that there's a Give It Back Empowerment Summit um, that will be hosted at Church Square Complex this weekend on Friday, July the 21st. It's going to be a night... Um, of comedy with country Wayne Coley and comedian Tremaine Dupree and also Stella Award finalist Charles Moore will be um, in attendance as well. So that is this Friday, 7 p.m. at Central Square Complex. Um, also, we, a lot of the city departments have teamed together to um, host what is going to be the National Night Out Against Crime. This is the City of Douglas's Police Department first time participating in this event. It will be on August the 1st from 4 until 9 p.m. also at Central Square Complex. We're going to feature um, a gospel rapper, a concert by gospel rapper B. Sharp. That is at 6.30 p.m. followed uh, in conjunction, I'm sorry, with the Summer Beach Bash from 4 until 8 p.m. Lots of giveaways going um, to be given away during this event. Um, people can, those who attend the concert will have a chance to win four free tablets. Um, there are going to be some gift baskets given away. And also, we want to encourage church groups to come and participate. If, if church groups come and there's 10 or more in attendance with that group, they can register for a chance to win a free pizza party. Um, going to be some school supplies given away. The Polish Department will have um, free ID kits uh, for parents to uh, register the kids. The fire department is involved in this as well. They're going to have their um, educational hothouse on site. Listen, with the Summer Beach Bash, it's going to be the water slides, uh, hula hoop uh, contest. There's so much going on during this, during this event. This is the first time for the Night Out Against Crime here in Douglas, and we want to thank our community partners who are the uh, Doug Douglas Rotary Club, McCray Coca-Cola Broadcast, Broadcast South LLC, and Papa John's Pizza. And all of this information and more is available on our website. Follow us on social media as well. The next community residential drop-off day is coming up on Saturday, August the 5th, from 8 until 12 noon at the pole yard. And we heard from the Air Base Committee tonight as they announced plans for the first um, private aircraft fly-in that will be held at the Douglas, Jean Cham Douglas Municipal Gene Chambers <coughs> Airport on um, Saturday, August the 19th. So we encourage the community to attend this event as well. And I just want to end by saying that we are gearing up for the uh, South Georgia uh, barbecue and Outdoor Festival that will be held September 8th and 9th. We're still taking vendors for our general vendors for the indoors um, as well as uh, barbecue teams for the cooking competition. In conjunction with this festival, um, Rock Dog Entertainment is hosting a music concert on that Friday night featuring the Midnight Riders and I want to go ahead and announce that now because this is a uh, tribute band to the Almond Brothers and tickets are on sale now. So if anyone would like to go ahead and purchase their tickets for this concert that will be held at the Martin Center on Friday, uh, September 8th, they can go to rockdogentertainment.com for that. Um, the full scope of the festival is available on our website, or you can call public information, 383-0277. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. Mm -hmm. Now we'll do our <laughs> comments. <laughs> Commissioner... Uh, Pearson, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to, well, first thank Ms. Henderson for um, all of those announcements. We have a lot of things going on in the city of Douglas. Uh, I really don't know why people still say there's nothing to do in Douglas. I beg to disagree. Uh, actually, uh, someone got me tickets for that uh, event with Mr. Wayne, Country Wayne. I think his name is Kylie. 
I don't think it's Coley, so there's no relation. Here's a C-O-L-L-E-Y, mine maiden name C-O-L-E-Y. But anyway, I plan to attend that. But I'd just like to say that we did travel to GMA for our annual convention, and like the mayor stated, um, it is an opportunity to learn a lot. Uh, I mean, a lot. So congratulations, Commissioner Durham. Um, I've been there where you are now, so you keep on going, and before you know it, you'll have the highest award level certification you can get to. Um, and, and, and it gives you an opportunity to come back into your city to work, to, to implement new ideas, to better your city. And that's what it's all about. That's why we are up here to try to help to better our city. My tenure as president for GMA District, it actually ended. Uh, I must say that the last two years that I served have been very rewarding. Um, it's, it just gives you great uh, leadership uh, responsibilities to help to, to take your city forward. Uh, as a matter of fact, I came off the GMA board and Ms. Juanetta Boulder uh, got installed on the GMA board, so we still have representation from the city of Douglas, and that's great. Um, the Mayor's Youth Council that you all heard about uh, tonight, uh, I'm excited about that, um, but uh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing, and I look forward to that getting up and running, but uh, what I would like to see also something dealing with our youth once they get out of high school. You know, this recent incident that we had here in Douglas, I think when I got back in town Friday, somebody told me about a shooting or whatever. When I first came on the council, we had a problem with some young ladies in Douglas doing a lot of fighting. They were fighting. And I want to think that Danny Lewis was the city manager then, and I told him, I say, you know, we've got to do something about this because it was just really getting out of hand. And now it's to an escalated level of violence with these shootings that's going on. And I've heard that this has been happening for a few years now, and, and that troubles me. That really troubles me. So, you know, I'm going to say to our now city manager, um, I'm going to get with you to see what we can do, if anything. But I'd like to say to all our men in this community, you know, we're faced now with a lot of kids growing up without their fathers in the homes. And I think that that's causing a lot of problems that we're having in our communities. But people, I'm saying to you, all this killings and shootings, and, and I'm, I'm hearing they're just folk are going up the folk, taking stuff from them. This is not the Douglas that I once knew. That's why I left Atlanta from after college to come back home to Douglas, somewhere that I loved, that I felt safe, because I didn't feel safe in Atlanta. It was so much happening, and I just wanted to be somewhere safe. So I, cho I chose up, I, I, I turned down having a prosperous career economically to come back to my community that I love, that I wanted to help to better and move forward. But now it's seeming like what was going on in Atlanta when I graduated in 83 is beginning to happen in Douglas. And I'm saddened by it. I'm being honest with all of you. I am saddened by it. Because I know these families that this stuff is going on with. And, and, and this is just not how things used to be. And we can turn it around. And I'm sincere. I'm sincere almost to the point of tears because my heart is heavy. I've sat up here many of times saying that we've got to do something for our young folks. We've, we've, got to, we've got to get a hold to our young folks. We're losing them. We're losing them. We're losing them. That last meeting that I called in about 2015 that the media turned it around and said we were having a, a hate meeting or whatever, you know, since then I haven't really called any meetings really because that just kind of made us dysfunct. But I'm telling you, community, Douglas, something has to be done. I'm praying that that Carter boy does not die. I'm praying he does not die. But we've got to do something. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop it. So these families, we got to come together. I don't know what you all are feeling about, but whatever it is, it's senseless. It's not worth anybody's life. Life is something we cannot give back once it's taken. So I'm going to leave you all with that. Mr. Jacobs, I will be getting with you. And those of you who are out there in the community, 
Call the city manager. Call my number, 3934629. I am sincere. Please let's stop this killing. Please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Pearson. Mayor Pro Tem, your comments? Uh, I just uh, want to speak a little about our MEAG meeting in uh, Me Island. It was uh, some informative uh, sessions, and several of you attended them. And uh, two, I want to mention about uh, our people still cutting their grass, and even some of our city folks cutting grass and blowing it out in the street. And uh, we need the police and whomever is just stop and tell those folks they're not supposed to blow, blow those uh, clippings out in the street, especially when it's raining. It uh, it doesn't it doesn't blow back. But uh, let's uh, people have talked over the meetings about keeping our city looking good. Uh, this I would like to see us have a day where we got one of our clam trucks to go around and pick up some of these couches and uh, recliners and all. There's one on this, this lady's house and she's had tickets and everything. She had a couch up there and now she's got a chair. Somebody put her a chair out there. So go by and pick those things up and, and carry them off and send them a bill for it, whether they will pay for it or not, but it'll help the looks of the city to uh, uh, just because they won't even have to hardly leave the truck to uh, pick those items up and put them in that sway car and uh, to make city look better and uh, they come along good on the bypass out there. It seems like it won't ever happen and maybe we'll live long enough to see it but uh, it's a little inconvenience to a lot of people but uh, it's progress for Douglas and that's what we want to see is progress and uh, see something, say something. And uh, Mayor, uh, one more thing, on these golf carts and all that you spoke <coughs> about, somebody still needs to get on them folks. Like uh, Mr. Clinton Lott said one time, people come from a certain place that wasn't always right. Mm -hmm. He didn't say what was wrong with them, but I know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're coming from a place and those people, those kids ride those golf carts and uh, those other vehicles, uh, most of them use them on a the farm, uh, but they ride on the road. I saw a man from Green, I mean from Oak Park coming, and I'd call his name, but everybody knew him. He was coming with a dang four-wheeler with one of them slow signs on the back coming on the West Green Road and turned on Walker Street. He was coming into town. He was out there. And uh, I thought, well, surely somebody will see him and stop and say something to him. But anyhow, see something, say something. Thank you. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Commissioner McNeil. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, um, I, I will say in, um, in conjunction with Commissioner Pearson's passion for Douglas to, um, I guess, as ministry uh, and outreach to our youth, I had the privilege this week of speaking at a ribbon cutting for a new establishment in Douglas. It's called Akeem Academy. This is out on the uh, Pearson Highway across from the Catholic Church out there. Mm -hmm. And I commend these folks. They are, they are going to be doing a wonderful job. And I had to ask, what what does Akeem stand for? Or is this someone's name? Is this, are we, how, how is this academy named? Akeem means God will establish. And so when you see, when you look in the little classrooms and you see these children in there, and they have um, children preschool to age, I think they had initially said through age 14, and then they decided to go through age 16. So the older children help some with the younger children, but they provide meals, they provide daycare, they provide school, classroom type activities. Mm -hmm. Wonderful environment. So if you have an opportunity to, to look this group up if you need child care um, again I'm, I'm really impressed with what they've done and the name of it is Akeem Academy 
Uh, this was done through the Chamber of Commerce in Douglas. So there were a lot of community leaders there, and I think they were just as equally um, impressed. Um, I want to say our um, our condolences or our, our sympathy here to uh, Tommy Harrell's family, our city employee. Tommy's been with the city a long, long time, and Lynn's um, mo this was Tommy's mother-in-law, so Lynn's mother passed away, and um, several of us were out of town, so um, you know our, our um, sympathy to that family. And um, you know, again, I, I commend the city with the community drop-off days. Um, if you can help other people in your neighborhood get their stuff there, uh, if you have rental property, help your renters get their things there too because like Mr. Moore was saying, that can sometimes be unsightly and, um, and take away from our beauty in the city. We um, all enjoyed the MEAG conference. I know, uh, I think Mike had a, um, something with his son going on and um, an important family meeting. But for you who don't know what MEAG means, it's Municipal Electric Authority of Georgia. And we learned so much about our power resources and what the future holds for us. Uh, how to be good stewards of your money and um, you know of what you've entrusted us with so uh, I commend they did a great job with classes and um, you know again we're all working towards our some form of, um, of um, leadership award or, or whatever I commend um, Commissioner Durham on his new one that's great thank you mayor one more but not that one thank you outstanding Commissioner Clark Good evening, everybody. Um, just to pick it back on, it, on everything, we had a great GMA conference. Um, the city of Douglas should be very proud of the American Commission and our city clerk because we really shined at the GMA conference this year. I mean, there we go. We there really we go. shined. I know, I'm talking no, about the GMA because I was trying to name it yes. Douglas, uh, Georgia Municipal. Uh -huh. I was trying this <laughs> one. Association. Douglas. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to really shine. I mean, when I see <laughs> Clark, that's what um, I'm yeah. she was dynamic. Our mayor who did the speech to induct um, Commissioner Roper into the Hall of Fame. And Commissioner and Durham, sure. who sang the national anthem. I was going to yeah. give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going there. I knew you were. I'll yeah. have you pass yourself on the back. At the end of the day, I just want to be assertive. Uh -huh. That's all I want to do. This don't matter nothing. I mean, this don't matter. At the end of the day, I just want to be assertive. You know, like Mr. Roper said, we're here to do the people's business. But while we're here to do the people's business, we might as well get educated while we're doing it. Amen. And so I got to know in order to keep me out of jail, as they can say, <laughs> I got to attend these classes to keep me out of jail. <laughs> You know, so um, I just um, think that we really shined at the GMA conference, and we went to the MEAG um, That's the one I, yeah. The MEAG and the Million Island. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. I mean, it was great. And um, if a lot of people don't, a lot of people, I mean, if you don't know anything about our power in the city of Douglas, come by the city of Douglas. I mean, I mean, we can help you. No, because I hear a lot of people come to me, oh, Georgia Power this, Georgia Power that, not this and other. You can check on, I think it's on the Electric Cities of Georgia. It's also on the Georgia Public Service Commission. That's right. right. And you can check and see what's the rating from 1 to all the way down to 30, if I'm not mistaken. 94. And it was shown in, uh, it's 94. 94. Okay, you can see those rates. As a citizen, you can see those rates. You can view the watts. Mm -hmm. The watts it takes and stuff like that, and it'll show you what we rate at, so you can view that yourself, so that you can know what our city is doing. Cause you know, and if you don't know, now you know. You can view that, and also um, piggybacking on what um, Miss um, Commissioner um, Pierce has said <laughs> about um, Commissioner Roper. He yeah, always God bless his soul. He on your mind. He on He always <laughs> living. <laughs> But Commissioner Pearson said that um, about the young man that got shot, that's my second cousin. Oh, yeah, that's and, um, he's killing everybody. He's, oh, I am. That's my, that's my granddaddy's brother's shot. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah. And um, I'm just in with a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I'm just who I am. And um, as of this evening, he does have brain activity. Oh, good. So that's a blessing. Good, good. 
That's a blessing. And so, so I ask that you keep our family in prayer. Door. Because we have been there since December. I've been going to a funeral about every month in our family. And I, you know, really? my grandfather, we just buried our cousin Andy Saturday. So we ask that y'all keep <coughs> us in your prayers. Yes. Because, I mean, we, we as a city, we don't need to business. get far apart. We need to draw it together. Like it says, take a village to raise the child. I mean, we can talk it all day, but we got to go outside we, beneath the walls of the right. church. Yes. Beneath the walls of City Hall mm -hmm. and talk to some of these young people. Yes. Yes. There's so many young people that want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. There's so many young people that just don't have nothing to do. And I just feel like, per se, if we give them something to do, they'll be able to do something. Right. And I mean, we had, vaca I mean, we had vacation Bible school at our church. And just talking to some of the young people, you never know what they are going, going through. through. And I just, and I just, I just, I just challenge our city leaders, our city manager, I challenge our police department, fire department, every department. If you know a child is going through, it don't have to be in your church, it could be in the community or whatever. Talk to that mm -hmm. child, encourage that child. Mm -hmm. I mean, just take that child underneath your wings. It don't matter if you're red, white, black, That's there's right. no color right. in my eyes. I love everybody. That's the, I love everybody. And I would want everybody to have that chance, but you never know what a child is going through. And so with that being said, I just feel like at the end of the day, it's all about what we do. Mm -hmm. It's all about what we do. If I can help somebody along the way, mm -hmm. then my living That's right. shall yeah, not, not be in vain. Right. So it's just not no just five dollars. We got to go into action. That's right. We can take back to our community. We can take it back and bring it back what it used to be. Stop hating each other. Stop speaking hatred right. among each other. Because you can't go to heaven with hatred in your heart. That's right. You can't go to heaven like Mr. Roper say, dear children. That's you right. can't go to heaven with hatred in your heart. Forgive yes. and forgive. That's right. Because people die of heart attacks mm -hmm. because of die of dehydration. Mm -hmm. Dehydration ain't drinking no water. I made, in, I made up in my mind July the 4th mm -hmm. that that cocoa was the last cocoa I was going to drink. All right. And I ain't drunk another one since. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's what we want to do. It's how we want to how we want to improve ourselves. And we can take back our community. We can. Yeah. I tell you something that they had about the um, coming together at the um, middle school. I mean, not the freshman campus gym thing. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice. They had a nomination of Mr. and Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Community. And I wanted it, but I gave it to Mr. Ronnie Graham, who's a coach here. He does a lot for the community. Mm -hmm. That's why I say these things, it don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But all I wanted to hear God say is, well done at the end of the day. I know that's, right. that's what I'm working for, really. That's right. That's what I'm working for. But um, that's all I have to say, man. I, I thought you were going to do the time over tonight. No, <laughs> no. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. No, that's, 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 that's the collection plate. Oh, no, oh, oh, I can take it out tonight. <laughs> take what? So uh, before uh, we have uh, comments from Commissioner Gowan down there, we want to stand corrected. Uh, we didn't miss you at MIA. We actually oh, miss your children. <laughs> we actually miss your children. You know what I mean? B and D. So that, that's what we miss. Okay. Can we say B and D? Mm -hmm. That's what we miss. Commissioner Gow. Good evening. Um, Good evening. I also have the opportunity to attend our uh, Georgia Municipal Association conference and training and uh, enjoy that. Uh, miss Mr. Roper, you know. We got to talk about him. Um, I will share this. We take these. Uh, it's on the riverfront. The uh, convention center is down there on on some the island, and so you take ferries back and forth. And I was on the ferry with my family, and somebody noticed uh, somebody was wearing a Douglasville tag. And it looked, you know, if you look at it, it looks Douglas. And, and that man, one of the other gentlemen, said, "Well, the only thing I know about Douglas George is John Lee Roper." <laughs> he was another <laughs> delegate there. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, yeah. the man has been there so long. No. He's had that kind of impact. But he didn't just go to be there. He yeah. just been the training. He networked with everybody there and brought back a lot of interesting ideas. And I, I miss that time to be able to just sit down and talk and learn and, and you know hear some of his stories. It's, it's 
a good experience and I will miss him and I thought that that uh, honor was well deserved mm -hmm. that he received um, as Commissioner Durham um, talked about we had Miss Juanetta represented us for the Clerks Association the Municipal Clerks Association uh, Miss Christy Morgan who does a lot of she's uh, right up under uh, Mr. Jacobs but she's also kind of our liaison and takes care of us as a commission mm -hmm. she earned her clerk certification that's which right. is I, I understood about a three-year process mm -hmm. that she achieved and we congratulate her um, in, in doing so and of course Commissioner Durham I have to uh, you know that's inspirational to me <laughs> you know one of the new guys yeah. coming on you know that he's so eager to get out there and learn and do his part to increase his awareness and education so we can do a better job and that's what it's all about at the end of the day we appreciate you know the elected officials but our employees as well for what y'all do to uh, receive the training and the education that's going to improve our city you know improve the administration of, of our government here that's what it's all about at the end of the day I had the opportunity to take two classes that uh, you know I kind of looked at what was available and what we want to do and I chose the economics of education was one of the classes that I took uh, very informative um, gave me a good overview of what's going on in the state of Georgia and uh, I was relieved to know that you know we may not be right up there with the top but we're not at the bottom either and we're working uh, to get where we need to be in Coffee County um, if you look at graduation rates and things of that nature we've made a lot of progress and continue to make progress and when you evaluate and look at the the foundation that's needed to have a successful education system in Coffee County that's where we're at and that that made me feel good about things I will add though um, kind of a, a thing that I've noticed as a parent and I want to get this out there to, to all you parents who have children that are coming into the high school please uh, pay attention to the dual enrollment program um, mm -hmm. I noticed in my son's graduation there was about four or five young men and women who at the time that they graduated high school also received their two-year or associate's degree and what an accomplishment but if anything what they did was save themselves and their parents two years worth of college tuition amen if you're in dual enrollment you can take classes at South Georgia State College the state pays your tuition <coughs> and it does not count against any future hope scholarship money that you receive so I would encourage every parent every child sure. to look into that program you can take classes at uh, South Georgia State in our community in Wiregrass that is a great program some will tell you do do it um, I'm not do uh, advanced placement advanced placement you may or may not get credit for that class you know the school gets money for it so they don't want to tell you you know that but that's the bottom line you have to take a class you have to take a test at the end of that course and if you don't score high enough you don't get credit and not all colleges take that credit so I just uh, one thing that I've learned and was also talked about uh, in that class the other class that I took kind of relates back to some of the things we've talked about stronger communities stronger families and we kind of talk mainly about what's going on with a, with a uh, with a program here that, that's going on in the state of Georgia that's getting us the fam Georgia family connection and I think every county has that that's something that I want to get more involved in and learn more about but mm -hmm. as we all know our community is no stronger than than our families mm -hmm. you know um, this situation or this tragic event that took place on Friday you know in, in learning about it it, it kind of hits home to me uh, one of the young men that this being sought for questioning in the case I participated in high school sports with, with my son um, so I know who that young man is and it's very sad to me that somebody with that kind of promise is now facing this kind of situation and you know as, uh, Commissioner Pearson said one of the problems that we face in our community is a lack is a, a number of single parent families not having fathers in the home um, we've got to do what we can you know I had the opportunity over the break we have my wife's family reunion and to give you an example you know I just jotted some notes that our family reunion is a, my wife's family reunion is a little bit different in that it's a three-day event we don't just get together and have lunch one day mm -hmm. uh, back in 1930 Sylvester uh, Solomon and Dora Adams who were both raised in Coffee County got married he was 24 and Dora was 19 they had six children five lived to adulthood uh, four of those five children married they had 17 grandchildren 
all those 17 grandchildren have married. Uh, four got divorced and two got remarried. So 15 of them are married today. Uh, they've had a total of 75 grandchildren and great grandchildren. That's that fourth and uh, that third and fourth generation. My children are those great grandchildren are some of those. Mm -hmm. um, and looking the kind of impact those that man and woman that I they uh, they called her mama door. She passed away when uh, when my wife was born in that same year. So I've I've not been around her. But the impact these this couple has had uh, all their children grandchildren have married raised families we have they had 180 on 108 get together out of about a, a total of 137 possible uh, family members that could be there they came from as far away as alaska utah michigan ohio north carolina mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many of you know uh the reason why i was not able to attend meag was my oldest son nathan had to leave to uh enter the mission training center to do serve as two-year mission from our church and that's something that we believe in as a church is, is going and sharing the gospel and I looked in that list um, there's about let's see 13 13 of those grandchildren none of the, the sons did but 13 of their grandchildren and another six of the great grandchildren have served uh, church missions and to me it was a testament of the kind of faith they had mm -hmm. and as near as I can tell about every one of those folks, all 137, if you went to a church in their local church, you'd find them there on Sunday. So that's what's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just one example of one family. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of families out there in our county and our community that are just like that. But that is potential that everybody can have, the impact you can have. I doubt 87 years ago when these two got married that they, would, they had envisioned uh, what their teaching and example would do for their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. <coughs> but that's the kind of potential each one of us here has as we pass on what we have learned and our values to uh, subsequent generations. Mm -hmm. Somebody, and apparently a minister in town said this on the radio, and apparently he's uninformed or misinformed, but he made some comment to the effect that there was a, a teenage girl in his congregation that was, that was dating a Mormon boy. And you know, if she knew what was good for her, she had to quit that. Um, and I gotta say, that's probably the best decision that young girl can make. And I'm not putting down any other church, but to give you an example of what it takes for a Mormon boy, and y'all met my sons, you met Nathan, but a, a typical Mormon boy participates in Cub Scouts from the age of eight years old. Um, they participate in that and they achieve the era of light. They enter the Boy Scouts. Uh, most of these young men that enter the Boy Scouts achieve Scouts' highest rank, which is Eagle, which requires them to complete, among other things, lead a 100 hour plus service, pro 100 hour plus service project for their community. Many of you have heard and know the Scout Law. The Scout is mm -hmm. trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. These are the values these young men learn. Uh, they participate in our church from the age of 12. We call it the ironic or preparatory priesthood. And there's certain values that we try to teach these young men to become converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ and live his teachings, to serve faithfully in priesthood callings and fulfill the responsibilities of priesthood offices, to give meaningful service, to prepare and live worthily to receive the Melchizedek or higher priesthood and receive the temple ordinances, to prepare to serve an honorable full time mission obtain as much education as possible, prepare to become a worthy husband and father, and give proper respect to women, girls, and children. These are the values we teach these young men. Any Sunday, any given Sunday, you would find these young men in our congregations preparing, blessing, and passing the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. They wear white shirts and ties when they do so as a symbol to honor uh, the purity that's required to do so. Uh, from the age of 14 or in ninth grade, they, they uh, go through four years of early morning seminary, which is scripture study for about 50 minutes every day before school. This study includes uh, reading and, and learning from the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. We teach them to obey uh, a health code, which includes not drinking alcohol, tobacco, or harmful drugs. We teach them, in addition to giving proper respect, they should wait to, their age, to the age of 16 before they date. 
Uh, in addition to all these things, they complete numerous service opportunities as they arise. You know, coming up in the church, uh, I have, my, my wife's cousins have, my sons have uh, participated in cleanups from these hurricanes that have hit our Gulf for the last 10 years, the floods in Louisiana, the floods around Albany, the storms that have hit Albany, on down to cleaning up yards and uh, for elderly people in our community. And this they do voluntarily. And then, of course, like my son and these other young men that we know, a lot of them, they, give two, they take two years out of their life and go and uh, teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in other communities around the world. Um, one of the hard things for a parent is they, they don't get to come home for those two years and we only get to talk to them on the phone. And we're not, you know, you don't, you're not allowed to go visit them. You're not supposed to. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep that rule. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I would say, you know, that's the kind of person I've been raised to be. That's the kind of person that I'm raising my sons to be. And that's the kind of person that I want my daughter to date. And I would challenge each of us to try to live up. The, I'm not saying that that's you know, the ultimate example, but that's just one example, again, of, of what one church can do to right. prepare to just that. Yeah. You know, if I had not been taught these things, I would probably not have the desire to be married and to raise a family. Mm -hmm. And all participating in these programs and being able to pass these things on to my sons is one thing that I've learned that I can do to help our families in our community. And mm -hmm. so that's what I'm committed to doing and trying to commit and also committed to help these other young men learn the same. That's all I have, Mary. Thank you very much. Well, we get to hear from uh, the new boy. That smells similar, like, you know, <laughs> our new guy. Yeah. But uh, I want to say this right here before I let Commissioner Taylor uh, have his comments. Uh, as with uh, Commissioner McNeil, Commissioner Durham, and Commissioner uh, Gowan. I tried to give some advice and direction because I was there at one point and uh, I told Commissioner Taylor, what you think is not necessarily so. And what happens is, uh, I think Winston Churchill said, the sign of a first-rate mind is to be able to hold two contradictory ideas in your head at the same time. Well, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Taylor, we swarm in on Thursday. Uh, less than about, what, 18 hours, we had his butt sitting in a class, and uh, he came out his first class, and he was like, man, Mayor Paul, it ain't what I thought, man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Woo! I don't even want to go back in there. I said, well, what's going on? He said, they arguing that. They talking about how they don't get along with each other and all this and that. I said, well, I said, it's good to know that there are other communities like that. He said, well, I really don't want to go back in. I think, man, we got it going on. I said, he's been in class two hours. You know, <laughs> two hours. So I say, look, you got to go back in there at about 12. He say, well, I'm glad I don't have to be in there all day. But it gave him a different perspective, his first class. And uh, we drug him all over uh, Savannah. Him and his wife, Miss Bobby Jean, uh, the first lady, uh, Miss Jacobs, and, uh, and I drug him all over Amelia Island. All over Amelia Island. <laughs> so they, there was an opportunity to fellowship, but uh, I would say this right here, Commissioner Taylor. Uh, yeah, that's what they If do. your first trip to GMA and your first trip to uh, MEAG uh, opened your eyes and you were willing to learn, to understand that there is a process. Uh, I spent many t uh, hours talking to him, saying, hey, this is what this means and this and that, because it's overwhelming. You understand? Now, he was sworn in on a Thursday. He was in class. I think he had a class Friday, Friday. Saturday. We had cl uh, sessions on Sunday, right. and you had a class Monday. Monday. Right. Monday. Mm -hmm. So he was in class, busy, busy, busy. Then, I think we came home for a week. We took them. 
Huh? Yeah. Went to a family reunion. Family reunion. <laughs> then we took him to Amelia Island. And my last comment, he said he hadn't been to church. He thought he was going to have to do, uh, what's that, the new membership again? New membership. <laughs> orientation. <laughs> he said, new, new orientation. We've all missed our last two Sundays yeah. at church. Yeah. So. Yes. I, I had to tell the pastor yesterday, look, it'll, so, it'll calm down a little bit. I'll be here now. So, Todd, new commissioner, Commissioner yeah. Edwin Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to take time out to thank the Citizen Award One. Uh, for going out, voting for me um, on election day, because if it wouldn't had been, not been for those people going out, voting for me, I would not be sitting in this seat here. A big thanks to my wife for uh, promoting me, pushed me when I didn't want to go. Um, those days when I had worked those 10, 12 hours a day, she said, uh, Mr. Roper told you, you got to be consistent, got to be consistent, got to be consistent. We got out there, me and her, you know, um, knocked on doors. Uh, people got out, support us, you know, and all. So, um, again, I say thanks to the Citizen Award One for making it happen for me. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with these commissioners here. Uh, I'm a new kid on the block, but um, <laughs> it's not my first time serving because um, I have served all of my days, you know, I've been brought up in the church. My mom and dad brought me up in church. Uh, I served on many capacities that's in the church. I'm used to serving for the community, and um, I'm just excited about being here, and I want to carry the city of Douglas to another level. Again, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Outstanding. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, as I said, when we were giving uh, Commissioner Durham his award, because, you know, he wants to make sure that the citizens of his ward know he's died and they're learning. Oh, yeah. So, but I, I do have a couple comments, and we do have a uh, a uh, executive session, so I'll try to be as brief. I'll be, I'll be three I'll, minutes. I'll be shorter than uh, Commissioner Gow. Amen. <laughs> I'll definitely be shorter than Commissioner Gow. The, the first thing is, uh, you've all heard us say something about the GMA over in Savannah. And uh, I had one of the little booklets that, you know, you go and see what's going on, this and that. So after the city of Douglas was so well represented in so many venues and uh, large stages. Uh, I still, I just wrote Douglas the Municipal Association on there because every time I turned around, it was Wadnetta, it was Mr. Jacobs, it was uh, Christie, it was Commissioner Dern, just all over the place. We were just well represented. I think that everybody was there attending classes. I mean, it makes you feel good. It really makes you feel good knowing that not only are we being active in the city of Douglas, but when you wear that tag around your neck that says Douglas, people know who we are. Mm -hmm. They know who we are. So that really made me feel good. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Roper was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, that still bothers me, so I try to be as brief. Uh, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and offered their condolences and, and shared conversations about uh, Mr. Roper and his experiences. And it was just amazing that the number of people that Mr. Roper had befriended, that the number of people that trusted him and trusted his leadership, and he has made uh, friends forever, and that's remarkable. I think uh, going over there to GMA, Mr. Roper walked the walk, and he talked the talk, and for him to be recognized and inducted into the Hall of Fame is the highest honor for an elected official. The next thing is I want to talk to you about is our city parks. I keep saying this. Our city parks, you know, they actually close when it's dark 
and it don't open back up until sunrise. I think the term is dust to dawn or something like that. So you're not authorized to be in any city park when it's dark. The, uh, we do have some uh, waivers when there's a, a music down, normally down at Round Tree Park. But also, even if you have that waiver, I think it stops at 11, and I believe that that uh, waiver says no foul language, no profanity, or anything like that. So I'm saying this because if the police come up there and issue you a ticket or give you a warning, you signed the document saying that you would adhere to that and you're in violation. Also, in the park, there are no motorized vehicles allowed in the park. So I think that it would be okay if you're putting on a show and you have some heavy equipment to bring your vehicle in there, unload, and then go to the parking lot. At no point are you authorized to be in any city park with a motorized vehicle. So if there is a concert going on or a DJ or something like that, a family reunion in any of the city parks, it is not correct for you to leave your vehicle in the park, unload and go to the parking lot. And that includes cars, motorcycles, scooters, golf carts, and four-wheelers. Four-wheelers, are not authorized to be driven on city streets, correct, Chief? Correct. Golf carts are not authorized to be driven on city streets. Those fines can range anywhere from about $300 all the way up to $750. All the way to $750. My next thing is this right here. I know it's early. But you need to start, for all our churches out there, you need to start thinking about the Christmas parade because I need more churches to participate in the Christmas parade. Christmas parade, Christmas parade. And once again, do not start out big. You will be over there working on that float forever. And it's going to cost a whole bunch of money if you go out there and get one of them flatbeds to start out. Go find you somebody with a, a little trailer that they pull one car on, spend a couple hundred dollars, get it looking all nice and pretty so you can uh, make some educated adjustments for the next year. I highly advise do not go get a flatbed. Do not go get a flatbed. But this is the time uh, to celebrate <laughs> our Lord in Christ, uh, and I would like to see more churches participate. This, this is the church's time to shine. This is the church's time to shine. I really would like to see that. My next thing is we're, we're talking about a youth council. Believe it or not, and Ms. Henderson can, re can correct me, I tried to uh, bring about a youth council the last time I served as the mayor. Uh, one of the things that I believe about the youth council is I always, I always tell folks this, if you ask the question, be prepared for the answer. And sometimes a person don't want to ask that question because they don't want that answer. Well, one of the things is the youth council, I believe Commissioner Carter is our youngest up here. And if you don't mind, how old are you? I'm 33. 33. So, for Mr. Carter to have a conversation with a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old, uh, I think that Mr. Carter's uh, attitude is very infectious. I think that a lot of people just like this guy, love this guy. So he may be able to connect with that 15- or 14-year-old, whereas some of us older ones may not be able to. So I think that a youth council gives us first-hand knowledge of, hey, what's going on? What's going on at, at the, uh, in your environment? <laughs> we want to know, and we want to try to do something. Uh, so I, I am really excited about this youth council. I think that uh, it's going to really pay us some dividends. My last thing is about, you know, let me say this right here. Let me preface this. Yes. 
what I'm about to say is is difficult in nature. When we talk about crime in our city, and we talk about crime across this nation, it starts with the leadership. Believe it or not, it starts with the leadership. And we are the leaders of this community. Our community elected us. What sometimes becomes difficult for law enforcement officer is when they issue a citation or they issue a ticket, this is still somebody's child. This is somebody's daddy or somebody's aunt or somebody's uncle that they may not be able to pay that fine. And what happens? Hey, Commissioner Dern, what about this? Or what about that? So sometimes leadership has to make a committed decision. A committed decision. I'm not just saying uh, let law enforcement do what they want to do, but Bless you. we have to let them do their job. And we have to stay out the way until it rises to a level that there may be some type of impropriety. There may, I remember the last time I served as the mayor, my daughter was pulled over and said, Daddy, I said, what? They told me my tents was too dark, and they told me if I didn't take it off that uh, I had to pay a fine. So wh what you going to do? I say, uh, which one do you want me to take off? Because we ain't paying. You know what I mean? <laughs> we ain't paying. So if I make my daughter adhere to the law, I think that we should be willing to make everybody <coughs> adhere to the law. Because when we get out there and we talk about this, and let me say this right here. I often use this analogy. The worst time to talk to teenagers about teenage pregnancy is when the girl is six months pregnant. That's the worst time. So my thing about crime and all this and that is that I believe that we have a, a, a police force, we have a city manager, we have the necessary skill sets to do what needs to be done, but we also must be mindful what happens when you get that call. What happens when you get that call? And sometimes that's difficult. Uh, Mr. Jacobs gave me some advice on fixed tickets. On fixed tickets. And guess what? I've adopted that. On fixed tickets. On fix. You want to go talk to the chief? Go talk to him. You know what I mean? He'll talk to you. Hey, look, chief, got a citizen want to talk to you. Send him on down, Mayor Paul. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. But I had to learn that I need to stay out of the way also. I had to stay out of the way also. So we say, see something, say something. One of the things that uh, I was reading the article during the, uh, before the work session. Last time I served as a mayor, I used to do something called the Mayor's Monthly Minutes. Uh, we're going to start that back. So department heads, start making sure you keep account of what you do throughout the course of the month. And please give them to Miss Georgia Henderson. We'll start a rough draft and I'll add some stuff. Chief, uh, the uh, how we track where crime is, are we able to show a little map of the city of Ducks that shows where the dots are? Because I've been reading this book, Put Cops Where the Dots At. Not yet. Because one, one of the things is this right here, when we police up the community or we police up the city, we naturally put officers in the most visible crime areas. So with that being said, uh, look, every child deserves a chance. Every child deserves a chance. And I tell people this all the time. All the time. My mom was a teenage mother. My mom and dad got divorced when I was 14. I lived in D5 over there on Gaskin Avenue. 
I was on food stamps when it was paper money and plastic coins. I lived with my grandmother and I made mistakes, but I didn't make a, a mistake so bad that it destroyed my future. The one time that I remember I was about to make a mistake, my uncle Van Bailey, we call him Bowleg, stopped me from doing something. He stopped me from doing something. I could have destroyed my life that night standing over there at the club in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So not only do we as a city have to do something, we as a community have to do something. That's right. It's easy to say it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's easy to say you it. can't get people involved. It's easy to say it. But listen to me. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. And it takes some heavy lifting. So, but guess what? We're the Magnificent Seven. Yes, we are. We are the Magnificent Seven. We can do anything. By the way, I'm Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question. I have a quick question. Chief, do you know how well that See Something, Say Something has been working? We get a lot of people to kind of participate with that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we, we get quite a few on our tips line, providing mm -hmm. information, which was really the object of the See Something, Say Something. Mm -hmm. Of course, as you know, we've expanded it through the call center as well. Right. Stand. At this time, I will entertain a motion to go in executive session. So moved. Second. It's been motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We're in executive session. We'll let everybody depart.